What's going on guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and I've been broadcasting from this makeshift set, the bookcase behind me, all the stuff on it, for the past week just to see your reaction, just for a you know, change of pace, something different. And you know, you see all the books behind me, a lot of people have commented about the Bill Clinton book. You know, I'm into politics, what can I say? So I have a bunch of different books on the previous or the various presidents. So it's there and you know one thing I have to say in the words of Bill Clinton, I like cell phones. It's the best I've got. It's the best I've got. But I do have the Kia Sera Echo with me. It's a dual screen Android phone from Sprint available on the 17th. It's going to be available for $199.99. So for gamers, it's awesome. It, you know, a whole new form factor, a whole new opportunity for uh, game developers, for people like that. Five megapixel camera with HD video capture on the back. But the winning thing are the, uh, are the screens that really, you know, when they come down, it looks just like a tablet. You can use it in portrait or in landscape mode. So is this a device to get on Sprint? Should you go with the Evo 4G, the Evo Shift, the Epic, something with 4G since this doesn't have 4G? We're going to figure it out and more in the full review. It's really the best I've There's got. There's so many possibilities with this device, you know, just between web browsing and doing basic things like checking your contacts, all the way up to game developers that want to create something where you can utilize the two screens. Here it is, the Kia Sera Echo, available April 17th for $199.99 after rebate. Now it is a 3G only device, so it's not joining the carrier's 4G lineup, which may be a point of contention for some, and it makes you think, okay, this is a multimedia, obviously multimedia geared device because it has the two displays for uh, you know playing games, for multitasking, things like that, but it doesn't take, it doesn't support 4G. So that may be a point of contention for some that may push people to the Evo Shift, the Epic, some of these other devices that are on the market, uh, or at least on Sprint, that are 4G. So you have one gigahertz processor, it's Snapdragon, two 3.5 inch displays, and then just to recap some of the stuff we did in the unboxing, on the left side you have micro SD card slot, USB, uh, or excuse me, micro SD card slot, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, power button, volume rocker, and micro USB charging port. And you can see it's a pretty thick device when it's closed. I mean, that hinge takes up quite a bit of space. And uh, it's not, you know, it's not a tiny device by any means. It has good weight to it. Five megapixel camera with a flash and uh, shoots HD video as well. And then you have three capacitive buttons here. Now, when you open the display and you pop it down, there are three more capacitive buttons here. And depending on which screen is kind of the primary screen, those are the ones that will light up and those are the ones you can use. For example, I can't use these right now, but as soon as I close the device, it goes back to allowing me to use these. So I can open it back up. I can use it in uh, tablet mode. I can use it like that, kind of like a like a, a Game Boy or a Nintendo, and then I can pop it down like that as well. So a lot of different form factor opportunities depending on what you prefer, and a lot of the applications. There are only a few out of the box right now that will are true multitasking applications. For example, uh, contacts. Let's open up contacts, and let's say I want to simultaneously do something else. I can open up. And these are the compatible multitasking applications. You can see there are only seven right now. But well, I can do browser, for example, open up browser down here, and then I can scroll up and down through contacts while I'm browsing the web. Now, if I want to switch those, click once, swap, bam, and then I can do like that. So once you get used to it, yeah, after a couple of days of playing with it, it's easy to swap, work around, multitask, close it, go from portrait to landscape, close it into tablet mode, go back to messaging, let's say. You know, flip those around so you get used to the multitasking capabilities of the device. But we'll see here, talk a little bit about what comes uh, pre-installed on it. Angry Birds is something I downloaded because I wanted to see what it looks like uh, on this ta you know, kind of tablet slash big phone form factor. But you'll see some custom apps here, battery use, and you'll see browser, but then you'll see a little icon. Let me get it in where you can see it on the camera, that little icon beside browser. That means it is capable of multitasking. So you see browser, email, gallery, contacts, things like that are capable of, uh, of multitasking. So let's go back to that list. I didn't mean to do that. Browser, calendar, you know, calculator, those typical Android applications, but you'll see some things like Get Namco games, HD games, social messenger. So it's intended to be a game-centric, you know, social media-centric handset. You'll see uh, Sprint stuff, Sprint Radio, Sprint TV, Sprint uh, Football Live, NASCAR, Sprint Cup Mobile, Sprint Zone, and uh, the Sims 3. So a lot of opportunities here. And like, let's open up something like the Sims 3. I'm going to take this one a little bit out of context just because, no, we're not going to download that on Sprint's 3G network. But you can see ViewQ as well. And we'll, we'll go through Angry Birds. Actually, we'll do this a little bit out of order, and we'll go to Angry Birds first. Click on that. And so you can see that's using it 
in full tablet mode where it's going across both screens. Now if I want to play it from there, I can close it and it goes right back. So very easy to use, very easy to transition between the screens and between the different form factors. So I don't know what to do. I guess you have to watch this intro. I've actually, believe it or not, I've never played Angry Birds. I know, I know, I know, that's terrible. But uh, never played. Okay, so it's loading right now. And you really can see the slowness of uh, Sprint's 3G network. It's EVDO Revision A, but it's just such a tired, old uh, technology. I mean, EVDO, you really see how slow it is when you're doing things like downloading. I mean, Angry Birds took forever to download. Um, and even just little applications are taking some time. Now, other than that, it's pretty vanilla build. I mean, with the exception of the extensions that Kyocera has installed, you know, for the for the tablet functionality, it's a pretty standard build of Android. You'll see the five home screens, the buttons here at the bottom where I can click, scroll to a specific home screen, uh, go to that one, for example, and I can scroll back and forth. So very typical setup, like I said, just those extensions for the uh, to make use of the two 3.5 inch touch screens. Let's go into wallpapers here and change those. Get a couple of different wallpaper options. Let's do something a little more exciting. Let's do something like that. I like that. Just having some fun with the device, you know. So that's what it looks like when it's open. You can use it there. You can use it in portrait as well. And then let's go into messaging, for example, because this is where you can really make use of that dual screen. So you're opening, you know, you have it like this. And you'll notice little differences, for example, even though it's supposedly a stock build of Android 2.2, You'll see color differences, like the notifications bar looks different. This is the Android keyboard, but the Android keyboard looks slightly different because it had to be accommodated, or uh, had to be matched to the uh, the tablet form factor. So you'll see, you know, doesn't look exactly the same, but pretty similar functionality. I'm going to discard that and start a new one. How's it going? Now that's no fun. The quick brown fox. The quick brown fox is ready for the weekend. Now obviously 3.5 inch display, you know, that's iPhone size display, but it may be too small for some people. So if you you don't, it's too small of a keyboard for you, you can't do it on that one. You can pop open the second screen and use literally the entire second screen as a keyboard. So it just gave you a gigantic 3.5 inch landscape keyboard where it's much easier to type on. So you can say, ready. So you can see a little bit easier to type on. You can tilt it like that if you so desire. That's kind of awkward to me, but you can tilt that and use it just like that and more. So you get the ability to do all of that now, like certain things when you're in portrait or you're in landscape. For example, it's not going to tilt here because they don't want to do the keyboard across the two hinges there, if you will. But uh, the ability to use that second screen is really a plus. So in addition to the standard Android keyboard or at least the modified Android keyboard, for this device. It comes with swipe as well, which you can see here, kind of modified for the second display. But we can use swipe. There. How, woo, that wasn't right. How, yeah, we'll go with that. How are you? Which I'm not very good at swipe, but you get the idea. When it's locked together like that, very easy to use. And if we we'll kick it back over here into one screen mode, we can use swipe in portrait or in landscape. Hello. How are you. So pretty easy to use and you know it's funny it this design has grown on me a lot more since we saw it for the first time in New York City. I thought it was going to be kind of plasticky and the device is kind of plasticky feeling but it's a pretty unique concept. It's something no one else has done before uh, at least in this form factor and they've made it pretty functional out of the box you know look at stuff like 3D and you're like well it's not really there yet because it's new there's no content there's no ecosystem surrounding it content ecosystem that is but and there's not around this one, don't get me wrong, there's not a whole lot uh, available for both displays, but they've done a really good job of out-of-the-box compatibility. I haven't had any actual issues with the device. You know, it's seamless transition. I mean, you can see me doing this. Seamless transition in between the, uh, the two screens. We'll go to Phone Dog here so we can see what it looks like on the browser. And now one thing I did notice, the browser does not have pinch-to-zoom capabilities. I'm assuming that's as a result of the two screens, so that may be something you don't like, but we'll I'll show you in just a sec, phonedog.com. And uh, not only does it not have pinch-to-zoom capabilities when both are open, but it doesn't have pinch-to-zoom capabilities when just one is open. Uh, you just have the option of zooming in, zooming out, and that's about it. So 
you know, for people that like to pinch to zoom, maybe a deal breaker, but we'll wait for it to load. See what I'm saying? Kind of about Sprint's 3G network. It's old. It's uh, it's very slow. EVDO in general is just slow. It's time to, you know, jump on the uh, the LTE, WiMAX, HSPA+, Plus, whichever carrier of choice uh, you decide to go with one of the 4G technologies. Let's see, still loading. And then Echo, they're working on kind of an ecosystem around the Echo. So there's a tablet extension you can install, which enables applications to uh, work on both screens, which I installed that before installing Angry Birds. That's why you saw it on both displays. Beforehand, it would have been on just uh, just one. So here's Phone Dog. You can see, I mean, it looks nice. It's nice to have that big display, almost a tablet feel, but in a pocketable form factor when it's closed. That said, you know, we can scroll up, we can scroll down. You know, pretty seamless transition in between. Okay, it's still loading, so ignore how slow that it went. Excuse me, how slow that was. I can't talk. Now that it's fully loaded, let's try and do it again. You can see Flash running in the background. But I mean, overall, you know, if you don't focus on the page necessarily, focus on how it transitions between the two screens. I mean, they've done a great job of the transitional stuff. Now that said, here's your zoom. It does not allow you to pinch in, or pinch to zoom, rather. You can double tap to zoom in, and then you can zoom in from there or zoom out using the actual buttons, but you cannot pinch to zoom. So I don't personally care for that, but I'm assuming it has something to do with the two displays. Now you have new window bookmarks, windows, refresh, and more, just like the typical Android browser setup. So we can go to windows, get open up a new, and I like to show you this because it just shows you how they've taken advantage of the two screens as opposed to the one that you would see on any other Android handset. So we have phone dog, we have portal login. So let's go to, you know, just portal login, for example. There it is. So we'll say, oh, I'm bored with that. We want to go back to phone dog. Pretty easy to snap back. Now, when one screen's open, let's jump back to phone dog. Let's see what it looks like then. Okay, looks just like that. So see some minor differences between when it's open and when, the, you know, you're just using one screen. But, you know, obviously to me, pretty fast, works pretty well. Although the browser was a little bit slow. Thanks to uh, thanks to flash running, and it was frustrating that there was no pinch to zoom either.